end of the road at Chopu. Showing their fire and raw talent was a new crew of young surfers on the WCT. Joka Jr., CJ Hobgood, Kalani Robb, Corey Lopez, and Bruce and Andy Irons. For me, this wave is a lot more intense and um, it's more consistently in, insane the way every wave does the same thing where pipeline, you know, it's a lot more wedgier and uh, harder to predict, more wobbly. But um, yeah, I put this win right here, right next to, right up there with pipeline for sure. That 10-point ride was amazing. I basically just kind of got lucky because he had priority and I kind of snuck on the inside and got in. And right when I took off, I knew it was going to be really, really hollow, but I didn't know if it was makeable. And like the next thing I know, it was way in front of me. I could see the end of the barrel and then it just kind of came closer and closer. I was like, oh my, I can't believe I'm going to make this. And right when I came out, it was just like my first instinct. I was like, yeah! Disappointment blew into Tahiti at the start of round four. Heavy winds and sideways rain battered the boats in the lineup, but the reef at Chopu was still able to produce contestable waves for the lucky 16 surfers remaining. I don't know, maybe the conditions could be a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to watch it and uh, see what's going on out there and I'm just get a little game plan going and just hope for the best. I know, probably just be really selective and uh, if I have to start scrambling at the end, then maybe something like that. Heat four match two world champs, reigning champ Sonny Garcia and 99 champ Mark Akalupo in poor condition, with Aki getting the best of the exchange. Now I went with like 30 minutes without a wave, sending out a 375, but. I just wanted to be, you know, still relaxed because you can get lots of waves in a short time out there and and uh, ended up getting an eight and gee whiz, I'm really sucked. Wednesday there's a flight out of here and I will be on it. So I know I'm to my wife, sleeping in a nice warm bed, air conditioned room, and I'll have cable TV. How can I go wrong? Despite the fact that the conditions at Chopu were less than what contest organizers were hoping for, Chopu at four to five feet is still a world class left. With four rounds complete, moving on to the quarterfinals are 1999 world champ Mark Akalupo, CJ Hobgood, Shane Powell, Corey Lopez. Surf action from Tahiti continues tomorrow and all week. Yo, I'm Luke. Yo. There's not much building here, you know, it's just pretty much the Aina in its raw form. And um, it's just such a tropical climate and just, just so, such warm weather. You can just walk around in your swim shorts and it's just, just a great vibration here. The people are really loving, a lot of aloha spirit. There's a lot to be said about Tahiti. Uh, amazing. I'm looking at an amazing, you know, valley right now. There's like three of them that sit straight behind Chopu that you look at when you're in the lineup. If I was single, why would I leave Tahiti? I would be here for like a month. It's, it's a real pleasure to be here. I feel honored, really, to be here. This is uh, not a bad place to be. Later in the show, it's back to Tahiti for more men's... Not having competed in a right the entire contest, event organizers decided to hold an expression session at Lance's right. They offered $10,000 between three maneuvers, best tube, best air, and best maneuver. 
$1,000. The winner from each category would receive $3,333.33 for their efforts. Doubling up. Oh. It's doubling up. There's definitely size. Five feet, huh? Um, everyone over here is ready to go, so we're gonna have it. It's cool to be able to go to a spot. Surf it with only six of your friends out. I just like to uh, get barrels and go fast, try big fast moves. Watching the best guys do what they do and trying to like learn from uh, their little techniques, you know, watch a lot of surf videos and see what the best guys are doing and just being on this trip watching all these guys surf is unreal. Learn uh, you know, big gouges like Ock and bust big airs like my brother. CJ's super good too, it's just crazy airs. He's even like trying a new hob good flip thing, he almost pulled it off. But yeah, Timmy was Cool. Throw it out, blast in the pass. That was super quick and really flexible. And, uh, fun to watch the surf. After a progressive expression session, everyone gathered on the main boat for the award. First, we're going to announce the results of the miracle expression session. And a miracle in that somehow we motored all the way up here and a blown out junky looking day Atlantis got pretty damn good. And the surfing was pretty impressive. So we'll start with the best maneuver. To be a maneuver, the board had to stay in the water. And winning that prize and that strange sum of money for a very progressive, very innovative backside 360 is CJ Hobson. We didn't know there was going to be a barrel out there like the one we saw and like the one that won. And if anyone proved that he has this wave totally in his pocket, the guy that got the best tube, and that's Shane Dorian. <laughs> and that leads us to best air. And the best aerial actually came in the very closing minutes of the heat. We're going to give the award for the air, and that goes to Bruce Irons. They hadn't competed on a right all week, but that didn't hold them back. The expression session performances were off the hook. Three maneuvers, ten grand. Not a bad day's work for Bruce, CJ, and Shane. Later on Blue Torch, we return to Western Sumatra and see who's crowned king of the OP Pro Mentawi Islands, presented by Surfer Magazine. The LP Pro started with six of the world's best male surfers, and after four rounds, five different reef breaks, and countless miles of boat travel, three surfers remain. Mark Akalupo, the returning LP Pro Mentawi Islands champion, won round three, taking the $5,000 heat prize and securing his spot in the finals. He was closely followed by Andy Irons. Irons took round two earlier in the week, and like Akalupo, was never ousted into the loser's bracket. His performance in round three also secured him a spot in the finals. They would be joined by Bruce Irons. His original and explosive approach pushed him through the repercharge round. This heat win also eliminated the rest of the field from competition, advancing Bruce from the loser's bracket into the main event. With a clean swell peeling across the reef known as macaronis, and three of the world's best ready to tear it apart, the stage was set for the winner-take-all 
$30,000 OP Pro Final. I know what you're thinking. This is just good I do really like this wave, it's one of my favourite waves in the world. Augie's is just insane, so well rounded, um, just such good uh, power. Surfing on macaronis is just inspiring, just watching them surf. So deep in the barrel, we'll come out and do the raddest grab rail cutbacks, do, you know, do an air. It was just unreal surfing every day, it was just a pleasure. And he's all timing. Can't, can't pick a floor in his style and his um, approach. You know, he's a good competitor too, Andy. You know, he's really strong and um, when he's focused, he's just really hard to beat. It's like a surf trip, it's killer, just in the water, non-stop. Bruce shines everywhere, really. Uh, just, I've got a lot of time for Bruce and a lot of respect for him. I can't wait till the day he qualifies, because I've always said that I think he's one of the best surfers in the world. I like watching him do airs, just really big airs, and um, other than that, you know, he does, he can do everything pretty good, so. So lucky to be able to do what we love and get paid to do it. I'm just trying to do as long as I can and, you know, look at it later and be happy with what I did. Yeah, it's super fun. I just, I just came out here to have a good time, surf with friends, and that's what happened last time, so I had a really good trip. If you do not understand or speak English very well, you may bring an interpreter with you. I had a really good sesh. To, to be surfing against those guys, you've got to be competitive. So much incredible surfing that we saw at all the different venues. It was an amazing thing to see. But there was a winner, and there was a decisive winner, the 2001 OP Pro champion and defending champion, Mark Akaluto. we got that day and the way the boys are surfing and just to be included with those, you know, those surfers, I mean, the surfers that are with me and ended up at Macaroni's, which is one of my favourite ways. Now, I can't believe that I borrowed some guy's board on the boat to the wind. <laughs> Love boat. Thanks, Herbie. Thanks, Herbie. <laughs> That's my board, Aki's on. Mark Akalupo, you know, mid-80s, was the phenomenon. He now is competing against and beating kids that were toddlers when he was considered in his prime. And not just hanging on for one last gasp. Like they said, he schooled the new school. And it, it, it's one of the most impressive feats in competitive surfing ever. I am going through some changes. It does mean a lot, you know, just keep on track and uh, keep surfing better. It's my main goal right now. Looking for a really good year um, on the CT and, and this is a real confidence boost. After 10 days of groundbreaking surfing, Aki took home a total of $35,000 and bragging rights for being the only surfer to win back-to-back -back OP Pros at the Huntington Beach Pier and in the Matawi Islands.
Congratulations, Ock. Yeah.